Well, Donald Trump is now the oldest nominee for president in history, and Kamala Harris is not going to let anyone forget that, as we will see in a moment. On another day, when economic news indicators showed the world-leading strength of the Biden-Harris economy, Donald Trump did what he usually does, nothing. For four years, Donald Trump was the laziest and stupidest president in history by far, and now he is the laziest and stupidest presidential candidate in history. He is the only candidate for president today who did absolutely nothing today. There is no evidence that Donald Trump got out of bed today. He wouldn't have had to do that for the unhinged phone call he placed to the Fox Propaganda Network this morning. An hour before the new GDP report came out showing even stronger growth in the American economy than anticipated. In a statement, President Biden said, today's GDP report makes clear we now have the strongest economy in the world. Thanks to my and Vice President Harris's economic agenda, our economy grew a robust 2.8% over the last quarter based on strong American consumers and business investment. That will not stop Donald Trump and did not stop Donald Trump from lying about the American economy and pretending it is something other than the best in the world, as he did, of course, today on the phone with Fox when he also called Kamala Harris real garbage. I get a kick out of one thing. They say, sir, be nice. You just got hit with a bullet. Maybe he's changed. Be nice. And I'd love to be nice, but I'm dealing against real garbage uh, when you hear that. Okay, sir, two things. Number one, according to the FBI director's under oath testimony yesterday, we don't know if Donald Trump got hit with a bullet. The FBI director suggested it could be shrapnel or something else far less dangerous than a bullet. Donald Trump is the only person in history protected by the Secret Service who was shot at, brought to a hospital, and then did not allow any of the medical personnel at that hospital to explain to the news media what happened to him. None of the medical personnel who treated Donald Trump at the hospital have been allowed to say what they think drew blood that day. With respect to former President Trump, um, there's, it, there's some question about whether or not uh, it's a bullet or shrapnel that, you know, that hit his ear. So it's, it's conceivable, although as I sit here right now, I don't know whether that bullet, in addition to you know, causing the grazing, could have also landed somewhere else. Um, but I believe we've accounted for all of the shots and the cartridges. And number two, real garbage. If you're the type of person who tries to think of people as inanimate objects, it's hard to think of someone who would better personify real garbage than the man who you just heard call his opponent real garbage. Everything out of Donald Trump's mouth is real garbage and should be treated as such by the news media. Donald Trump is a pollutant. He has polluted American politics. He has polluted the vulnerable minds of the people who believe QAnon madness and all other sorts of utter impossibilities out the world, about the world and then follow their hero, Donald Trump. He is simultaneously stupid enough to believe the real garbage that he spews and liar enough not to believe all of it. And so the real garbage campaign is underway. On most campaign days between now and Election Day, the oldest, laziest, and stupidest presidential nominee in history will do absolutely nothing, but will probably manage to find the time on social media or otherwise to spew his garbage, including on Rupert Murdoch's garbage channel, where they all lap it up for money, Rupert Murdoch's money. Rupert Murdoch is the richest and oldest owner of a propaganda channel anywhere in the world. And he has dedicated it for years now to the, del for, to the delivery of real garbage directly into the homes of Fox viewers on behalf of the real garbage man, who is the oldest and only criminal presidential nominee in history. The Harris campaign's response to Donald Trump's words on Fox this morning was titled this way.
Statement on a 78-year-old criminal's Fox News appearance. The statement then took issue with some of what Donald Trump had to say, and of course, but the whole point of the statement was in that title. And that's the part that Donald Trump will be hit with every day, and that will hurt him personally every day, because we know who he is. We know enough to know that the phrase 78-year-old criminal will hurt him personally and is going to be thrown at Donald Trump every day for the next 103 days by the Harris campaign. And every one of those days, it's going to be true. Donald Trump is going to be 78 years old, and he is going to be a, con a criminal, a convicted criminal, every day of the presidential campaign. And on September 18th, in the middle of the presidential campaign, he's going to be sentenced for his 34 criminal convictions in a Manhattan courtroom. And Kamala Harris is not going to let anyone not pay attention to that fact that Donald Trump is a 78-year-old criminal on that day when he is sentenced and on every day of the campaign. Of all of Donald Trump's bad qualities, his stupidity is both the most consistent and the most publicly damaging quality he has because it is the stupidity, the raw, unrelenting stupidity that lets him say things like this publicly. She's got a new line, you know, she's going, I'm the prosecutor. She's one of the worst prosecutors in history. Their campaign says, I'm the prosecutor and he is the convicted felon. That's their campaign. I don't think people are going to buy it. What's to buy? It's true. She's a prosecutor and you are a convicted felon, Donald. The entire world knows both of those things are true, and both of those things are going to be true every day of this presidential campaign. And now the prosecutor wants her day in court, the court of public opinion, with the convicted felon. I'm ready to debate Donald Trump. Um, I have agreed to the previously agreed upon September 10th debate. He agreed to that previously. Now it appears he's backpedaling, but I'm ready. And I think the Voters deserve to see the split screen that exists in this race on a debate stage. And so I'm ready. Let's go. When Donald Trump does pull himself out of the easy chair and get out on the campaign trail, as he did yesterday, he no longer uses that line about how he always hires the best people, since so many of the people he hired as president, he then fired, and so many of them and others who worked for Donald Trump as president, including his vice president, Mike Pence, have turned against Donald Trump in this presidential campaign. But Donald Trump continues to demonstrate just how bad he is at the very concept of hiring an expertise in government. Yesterday, he said, he wants race car drivers to guide our military. He wants race car drivers to tell our generals and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and the Pentagon what to do. Donald Trump believes that if you can drive a car in circles, surely you can tell the entire Defense Department to do what to do in every situation. He also said he thinks that football coaches should come to the Pentagon and take over those meetings and tell the generals what to do. Here's one of Donald Trump's favorite former football coaches. My opinion of a white nationalist, if somebody wants to call him white nationalist, to me is an American. That Alabama white nationalist may be America's stupidest person who has ever won a football game as a coach. And he is now, of course, a Republican senator. While Donald Trump did absolutely nothing today and may have spent the entire day in pajamas and slippers, we don't know, Kamala Harris accepted the endorsement of the American Federation of Teachers in Houston. As you may know, I am a proud product of public education. <laughs> Many of you know that my first grade teacher, Mrs. Frances Wilson, God rest her soul, taught me and educated me and encouraged me and inspired me and years later, when I walked across the stage to receive my law school diploma, Mrs. Frances Wilson was in the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And that's who you are.
I know who you are. I know who you are. This work is personal, and it is professional, and it is so critically important. And so it is because of Mrs. Wilson and so many teachers like her that I stand before you as Vice President of the United States of America. And that I am running to become President of the United States of America. In this moment, we are in a fight for our most fundamental freedoms. And to this room of leaders, I say, bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. in our country. We believe in its promise of freedom. And the American people believe in the promise of freedom. So we are in the fight. And today, Future Forward, the Kamala Harris Super PAC, said it will spend $50 million to broadcast this ad in key electoral college states in the three weeks leading up to the Democratic National Convention. She's the district attorney who protected children from sexual predators. She's the attorney general who stood up to the big banks to protect homeowners and won. The senator who fought to defend a woman's right to make her own medical decisions. And the vice president who fought to cap the price of insulin at $35 a month. As America turns the page, Kamala is ready.